crazy stuff in the world, including how's this from the UK? This is a year nine class where one of the kids decided to tape the idiocy being said by their teacher. Roll the tape. How dare you? You just really upset someone. <laughs> Saying things like should be in an asylum. I didn't say that. I just said if they, if they want to identify as a cow or something, then they're like genuinely unwell. Then they've gone, yeah, they're just crazy. Outside. You were questioning their identity. No, I wasn't a question. I was just saying about the gender. I didn't say anything about them. But where did you get this idea from there's only two genders? I just got their opinion. That is my opinion. If I respect their opinion, can't they respect my opinion? It just not an opinion. Yes, it is. It's not an opinion that's you can have. Those people think there's only two genders. There's only a boy and a girl. today. There's no other private part. There's only two. Gender is not linked to do with the not linked to the past that you were born with. Gender is about how you identify, which is what I said right from the very beginning. Yeah, of the I just lesson. don't agree with that. So why should I have to listen? But to Let's not muck around. Nigel Farage is just as concerned as you are. That is insanity and good on the kid for taping it. Yeah, absolutely. And Turning Point UK putting it out. And to, to begin with, I wasn't quite sure whether to believe it, but it's absolutely true. And well done to that 13-year-old for standing up to that hectoring teacher. So the story is very simple. They're talking about gender. And one of the girls in the class now identifies as a cat. Oh, God. All right? And so, I know, and so the 13-year-old says, well, that's crazy, she must have something wrong with her, at which she's berated by that teacher. And ultimately, she's told by that teacher that if you can't accept this, perhaps you'd better find another school. Mm. Now, these sort of things go on in classrooms every day in my country, in America, and I bet it's happening in Australia too. And very rarely does any of this actually have any documentary evidence. Our kids are being literally poisoned by intolerance. She wasn't allowed, that 13-year-old, to have a different point of view. It's a sort of modern form of fascism that is being put on our children. And I actually think, long-term, this is probably the biggest single battle our societies face. If we're turning out indoctrinated children, not capable of free thinking, not capable of understanding, that different people have different points of view, and that should be fine. If we can't stop that, then goodness knows where we're going to be in 20 years' time. Well, and one of your colleagues, and I've met her when I was in the UK, Michelle Dubry, who's a colleague of yours on uh, GB News, she decided to commit to the absurdity here. Have a look at this. Meow. I learned something new today, everybody. It's perfectly acceptable to identify as a cat. You what? Don't you dare mock it, by the way, because I've decided that is now what I am, meow shell to you. Uh, but if you do indeed mock it, careful, because I wouldn't be surprised if it could con be considered a hate crime. Self-identity, where do we draw the line? Kids at school being told that they must respect it if this is how their peers seriously want to present themselves. Good on her. She committed to the bit. If that's the way we're going to do editorials from now on, though, Nigel, I think we, uh, well, she set a new bar, a bar for us. And certainly on your program as well on GB News, you spoke about how Sadiq Khan is now starting to use air pollution as a reason to start to change the flow of traffic in the great capital. Yeah, I mean, not only do we have congestion charges, we have ultra-low emission zones, which are about to spread out at the end of August, even into bits of, you know, rural areas outside of built-up London. But last Tuesday, we had a big anti-cyclone. We had hot weather. Yes, we do sometimes mm. in this little country get hot weather. Uh, and no wind, so no wind turbines were working either. Um, and Sadiq Khan put out a statement saying, only use your car if it's absolutely necessary. Do not allow your engine to idle. Don't burn any wood, and so on. And I can confidently predict this is the beginning of climate lockdowns. We will have days when we're told you cannot use your car for the rest of the week. You have to use the London Underground where, incidentally, the air quality is far worse than it is up top. And, you know, we saw it. We saw the health lockdowns that took place, and goodness me, don't the people of the state of Victoria know all about that? And I think this fanaticism with net zero and with climate change, well, you know, we know what it's all about, really. It's about taxing us. It's about controlling us. So I am predicting climate lockdowns 
within the next few years. Well, and as we spoke about earlier in the show, uh, Net Zero 2050 is now being moved to Net Zero 2038. And as we all know, they keep moving the goalposts until eventually you're on the wrong side of the game. And finally, Harry and Megan, the money that they have received for not very much in terms of the output to Spotify, Netflix and all the rest of it is starting to dry up. Is this the beginning of the end of their little business model? Yes, there was uh, one of the senior execs at Spotify used some language, which I won't use on your show, um, but <laughs> something about them being F grifters. Um, yeah, they've just fleeced Spotify for a huge amount of money. They produced very little content. What they did was as absolutely dull as ditch water, um, and they're past their sell by date. You can't go on just selling a story about how awful your father and your sister-in-law are. In the end, everyone gets bored with it and will realise they've got nothing of any import to say whatsoever. Um, they're done in this country because nobody wants them here at all, which is why Meghan, of course, didn't even attend the coronation. Um, Harry does pop back, you know, now and again, because he's got five major lawsuits on the go. Um, and clearly, on the west coast of America, people are realising, do you know what? They're not really that interesting. So hopefully we'll hear far less of them in the years to come. We'll see you here in early July uh, as part of the tour with Donald Trump Jr. and Alex Antic as well. TrumpLive.com.au is the way to get the tickets. Nigel Farage, we'll see you next week.